my hotel room on the day of my It's So Easy filming film shoot. No, not a film. Segment shoot. I don't know. What do people call this? Um, it's been good so far. So in case you're wondering, I, we have got to find a better solution for this hand holding situation. Okay. That's better, right? Uh, well, better for me. I can't really speak so much for you guys. <laughs> it's a little shaky because it's on my bed. Um, okay. So I left Charlotte yesterday morning. Um, and flew from Charlotte to Cleveland direct. I, I got there in like way earlier than I normally would, like an hour and a half early, just so that I could like take my time and not be stressed out and be really focused and intentional with my choices of where I was standing and waiting and just not being rushed and you know, all of that. Um, and waited to board because I checked my bag, I could just like, literally be the last one on the plane. Uh, because I was the last one on the plane, I asked the um, flight attendant, if there's an open row, can I just go sit in that row and not have, because it was one of those planes where it was like two seats, an aisle, and then two seats. Um, and he said, yes. So the very, very back row by the bathroom, like not ideal, <laughs> you know, in a perfect world, but all four seats all the way across were completely empty. So we landed, it's a super quick flight, super quick. Um, landed, went to baggage claim. By the time I got down there, the bags were already coming out of the thing. So nobody was having to wait around for very long. Um, got my bag, got an Uber, Uber driver, super clean car. He had a mask on the whole time. I had a mask on the whole time. Um, the weather here is cold. They had a big snowstorm here. The, none of it is melted so like the roads are fine but like any grassy area or anything is all covered in snow so it's kind of like pretty in a way um but I am outside the city technically in a suburb of Cleveland so there's like not a lot around here this is like mostly for business travelers um I guess they have a big um Nestle corporate presence here and Stouffer's, you know, all those like manufacturing, food manufacturing places. So I think that's what most people come here for, but this is where the studio is where we film. So came here yesterday, checked in. I got to check in early. It was no issue, went right up to my room. It's great, it has like a bedroom, a bathroom obviously, and then also has like a sofa, desk, and even like a little kitchen, pretty cool. Um, so did that and then, um, one of the production assistants, I guess, I don't really know their titles, um, came and picked me up, went to the studio, checked it out, met the two other ladies that I will be not filming with, but that will be filming their segments today as well. Super, super nice. Their projects are really cute. Um, and just kind of got a lay of the land, then came back here and did all my prep work for the segments. So the way it works is you basically bring in what they call step outs. You bring in partially done, a little bit more done, and then fully done projects so that you're not stopping filming so that you can sew a whole bunch of things. You know what I mean? Like the idea is that your segment will run for 12 minutes straight and you don't stop and start in between, which is a little bit different than how I do it for the YouTube channel. But, um, so I had to make like, for example, um, doing the, um, how to convert a teardrop pocket to one that's sewn into the inseam. So I can't just show up with like just a fully sewn garment. I have to show up with, you know, a plain, um, just cut out pocket, I have to show up with the tracing paper, like new pocket draft done, but also a plain piece of tracing paper so I can show people how to draft it. And then like all the steps for doing the thing. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit more involved than anything that I normally do, but, um, it's supposed to be super, super 
efficient and I can like go in for a couple of hours and film both segments, knock them out and be done. So um, I came and prepped for that. I also had to like prep. So I have two for that same segment. I have two garments that I'm going to have on mannequins, one with the floppy pocket and one with the one that I'm going to be illustrating to show the difference of the not favorable option and then the one that I'm teaching everyone to sew. So I had to make sure those were pressed and clip all the threads and make sure they were like super presentable. And also I'm showing them inside out. So that was even more like there was a lot of threads <laughs> to clip. Think about all your garments and how many on the inside have like little threads that you've just never bothered snipping because nobody can see the inside. Well, now people are gonna see the insides of two of my garments. But I feel prepared. I've done all my studying. My other segment is about different types of seams and I'm not doing things like a flat build. I'm not doing French. I just assume most people watching the show already know how to do those things. And also if they don't, there's like already a thousand and one tutorials on it. Um, I'm doing really interesting different seams that are ideal for specific types of fabrics. So like sheer fabrics, um, furs and, uh, like synthetic leathers or ponte. Um, so those are the three kind of seams that I'm going to be doing. So um, I'm excited about it because I'm learning something new um, and also demonstrating something what I feel like is new to an audience. Um, so that one should be fun, but I've never done it before, at least with the pocket one. Like I'm very familiar with how to do that because I do it all the time at home. But the um, the um, other one, it's kind of like, I've technically never done this before, um, but it is still at the same time in my wheelhouse. You know what I mean? Like I get the concept. It's just a matter of executing it, which should be fine. But I get to use a really fancy brother machine uh, because I guess brother is a big sponsor of the show and they have like a brother representative there. They have like a lot of brother sewing machines. They have like the super, super fancy embroidery ones. I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be sewing on just kind of like a basic, not basic, it's a little bit nicer than the one that I have. And the one I have is like a low mid range one. Um, maybe this one costs like a thousand, twelve hundred dollars, something like that. I don't know, I didn't look it up, um, but it only sews, it's not embroidery. Um, so that'll be fun just to try out a new machine. But yeah, it's shower time because this is not TV ready. No. Um, shower time, makeup, get ready. Thankfully, I get to be really comfortable. They actually ask you to wear like quiet shoes, <laughs> which AKA sneakers. So I have these little boots. Um, and then I'm going to be showing you guys later what I wore in a separate video. So you guys will be able to see that. But yeah, I'm excited. So I am in the green room working on my projects like so and we can watch who's recording in the studio at the same time. Pretty cool. I um, got all my embroidery hoops done so you can see the right side and the wrong side of the seam. I've got all of my sample garments ready to go. This has been pressed so I can wear it. We're almost there. Almost my turn. Okay, this is me on the set of It's So Easy. You guys might recognize it. Who recognizes that background? I thought I would give you a little bit of a behind the scenes tour. You can see all the cameras and all the lights. If only I could fit all of that into my apartment, <laughs> that would be awesome. Let me flip you guys around so I can show you some of the decor stuff. It's really cute. Okay, so first off, we have this gigantic whisk, which is hysterical. But then look at all these cute little vintage things with like little notes and stuff. So cute. And then we have our window bench in front of a forest, because you know, nothing better than a little sewing cottage out in the woods and a little room divider. We've got this little um, sewing machine 
um, architectural drawing, what are those called? And then the safety pins that you guys all know, but what you might not be able to see on TV are all these little setups. So cute, right? With the thread and the thimble. So, so sweet. And then we've got even more thread over here. A little dress form. Look how cute this is. I have no idea where they got that, but that cube is adorable. And then on this guy, a little clock, some fabric, of course. Look in here, some buttons, old patterns, like, like borderline vintage patterns, which is cool. And some really old books. Cute, right? And look at this little guy. So sweet. And then lest I forget to point out our other um, double door, French doors leading out into, again, our little forest wonderland here in our sewing cottage. <laughs> it is the cutest little set. I just got done sewing my segments. This is the machine that I got to sew on. Hold on, I'll flip you around again. So this is the Brother PS500. Honestly, it's very similar to the one that I sew on at home. It might just be like a one step higher than that, but all of these buttons are the exact same. You can just kind of tell a little bit of a difference when you're actually sewing with it. It's just a little less clunky <laughs> or something as mine is. This one seemed really smooth and um, really nice. If you're in the market, I liked it. I liked using this one a lot. Just want to take a quick second here to give all my thanks to Coates and Clark for sponsoring my appearance on the show. I will have lots more information on the products I use to film my segments, but a heads up, you're going to want their dual duty poly thread, their fine thread, their buttonhole thread, and Eloflex stretch thread in your stash when the episode premieres. So thanks again to Coates and Clark. I can't wait for you all to see how great their threads are for some of these techniques that I was teaching during the show. Back in the hotel room, as you can't tell, back in my robe, does anybody else do that? As soon as you come back home or wherever you've been all day, you just like put on something comfy. That is me. I am surprised how exhausting it was to do that today. Um, it was basically like a whole bunch of sit around and wait, a whole bunch of like preparing um, little pieces. And I'm gonna show you what I worked on today. And then like, it's your turn to go. And so you go in and you basically run through the whole thing one time. Um, the first one I did, we stopped once because Oh, I picked up the wrong, I, don't, I did something. It was my fault. I did something wrong. So they stop you and then say, okay, we're going to pick you back up right after you said this thing, whatever it is. And so then you just pick back up again. You don't start from the beginning. You start from where you stopped. Um, so it took me maybe 90 minutes to do both segments. And that includes a portion in the middle where they had to like reset the set. So they took away the mannequins from the first one and all the fabric from the first one and changed out the thread and everything. They swapped it all out. Um, and it was like 90 minutes of actual work. Whew, and your girl is wiped. I think also too, just like being here, being in the studio all day, you're just on in a different way, hanging out with people that you don't really know in real life. Um, I've actually never met any of the people that I was hanging out with today until, well, I met them yesterday. Um, so it's just a different kind of relax. Like you're relaxed, but you're also like, I don't want to say something stupid. <laughs> so there's that element of it, but back in the hotel and I wanted to kind of, um, walk you through how it, how it all works. Cause it's actually incredibly efficient. And if I could get my together, I would utilize more of what they do on the channel. It just, it's like more prep work to do it the way they do it and less camera work. Whereas the way I do it is less prep work, but more time in front of the camera. 
So I don't really know how that balances itself out yet, but I'm willing to give it a go. And then also I wanted to show you this awesome goodie bag I got. Hold on one second. So you may or may not know, but Coates and Clark rebranded. Um, if you have any of their stuff that has the little um, logo with the chain on it, like this, that's not correct anymore. They have new ones now that have a flower on them instead, or like a kind of like a version of a flower. And so because the studio does all these sewing videos, they have so much thread. They had, basically she had half of a picnic table of stuff that they were giving away because they had gone through and purged a whole bunch of stuff and you know things that were older or things that they weren't they didn't use anymore they were just giving away to anybody and everybody who would take it um they had like clear rulers and cutting mats <laughs> they were just like whatever you want um and so since Co Coates and Clark sent me here I thought well I will do them a favor and take some of their thread home so basically what I got is a whole bunch of serger cones in neutral colors. So I got beige, I got white, and these have been used before, but that's okay. I got gray, and of course I got black. So basically I was able to stock up on serger thread. I got four or more of each of them. And actually I was getting ready to run out of white, so that was really helpful. And then, um, I can't remember if I've talked to you guys about this or not, but um, when I got that Coates and Clark, the 50, um, 50 piece assortment, thread assortment that is featured in my gift guide, they had a couple of these with the multicolor. And at first I was like, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, okay, that's going to be like a cute little design, like extra kitschy kind of element. But then I used it to top stitch those, um, that athleisure uh, capsule that I made with the leggings and the sports bra. So for the sports bra, uh, finish the neckline and the armholes, you basically do bias binding and you have to top stitch the top. And I used this in a coordinating color. So that fabric is like orange and pink and whatever. And so they happen to have one that had similar colors. It might be this one, um, exactly this one and it turned out so good and just kind of like blends in with all the tie-dye so for Black Friday I ordered a couple of tie-dye fabrics and um, like waffle knit and something oh not not a rib knit waffle knit and something else um and so they had this whole bag of all of these different multicolored ones so I have them I mean, every color I can possibly imagine. Maybe not green, but I do think I have green at home. But like, really, really cool ones. And then also this like neutral one too, that has just like gray and pink and stuff in it, which would be really pretty like on a blanket or something, you know? I don't know. Anyways, I got all of this, which was really nice, which made me happy that I didn't overstuff my bag on the way here. <laughs> I also checked it on the scale when I went to check it in and it was only at like 30 something pounds. So even though this is heavy, <laughs> I will go over my weight um, at check-in. Um, but what else do I wanna tell y'all about today? It was just really cool and fun. And honestly, it's not that much different than what I do already. Um, the uh, director uh, was like, so have you done TV before? <laughs> And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, you can just tell. And I'm like, I didn't even answer you yet. <laughs> he was like, no, you can tell because you are like talking normally and then the cameras come on and then your voice, like you just, your voice just becomes stronger and you like project yourself differently. Um, and just as soon as the cameras come on, he's like, you can tell. He's like, so what have you done in the past? And I was like, well, I studied broadcasting in college and yada 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 and then I told him about the YouTube channel and he was like oh my god just like me he's like you know I wanted to go to school and be you know the next big like NBC da, da, da. he's like but I didn't want to go to Topeka Kansas and you know live there for two years and report on whatever that is and or work on at their station in order to work my way up he's like I thought you could just show up in New York City and they would be happy to take you in 
So it was funny that we shared that story together, but um, also funny that he could kind of tell a little bit, which I wasn't sure if anybody was going to, I mean, I don't see myself as someone like a professional TV, like anything. Um, so it was just kind of cool to have someone in the industry kind of be like, yeah, you're like professional. <laughs> um, but so I hope that I'll be invited back again and I hope that I'll be able to do it again. Um, the segments will come out in March. It's like a three month turnaround. So of course I will keep you guys updated as I know more. Um, obviously if I go back out there, I don't know how often they are doing the filming portions, but if I go back out there, I'll be sure to let you guys know that too. So you know, all of this, every, every opportunity that I get is because of you guys. And I do not ever, ever, ever lose sight of that. So I have to thank you and everybody else that's helped me, um, along the way, get noticed. And, you know, if it weren't for my relationship with Coates and Clark, then I wouldn't have gone to do this thing today and make, you know, relationships with all the people there today. It's just one big ripple effect. Um, Dan said that I could be the next Anthony Bourdain and it'd be sewing confidential, <laughs> which I thought was hysterical. Um, so I, listen, I, I am very much still well grounded here, here on earth, here in my sewing room in Charlotte, all by myself, doing all the camera work and all the editing and everything else all by myself. Don't, don't you guys worry. I'm not going anywhere. Um, yeah, after one, <laughs> after one TV segment, all of a sudden I'm like, Discovery, HGTV, <laughs> here you go. Yeah, no, I, it doesn't work that way. Um, so yeah, but thank y'all for everything. Always, always, always. And I'm, I am just so happy to bring y'all along with me because I feel like we're on this journey together a little bit. So um, let me know if you have other questions. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for this vlog style video um, from Salone, Salon. Shoot, they told me how to say it and I forgot. Salon. Salon. <laughs> From just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. That's going to do it for me today. Back to you in the studio, Fred. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's going to do it. Thank you all so much for watching. See y'all soon. Bye.